Good morning and welcome to worship on this third Sunday of the season of Easter, April 18th, 2021. This morning's service begins with thanksgiving for baptism. It can be found on page 3 in our bulletin if you would like to follow along. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Refreshed together by the resurrection life that we share as one in Christ. Let us give thanks for the gift of our baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for the waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your Spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of our rebirth. It comes like rains to a thirsting earth. It comes like streams that revive our souls. It comes like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Gracious God, breathe your peace on your church. Especially when we hide in fear, we ask that you would clothe us with strength and clothe us from head to toe, covering our hands and our sides and our feet with mercy and forgiveness. We ask, gracious God, that you would send us companions to join us on our journey as we ourselves are moving and hoping together to share your life as one. We ask that you would make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise, together with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God, now and forever. The Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts. Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Are you familiar with the term dad bod? Can you picture a dad bod? 
This is a sort of pop cultural thing right about now. Dad bods. And get this, these things are cool. Finally, they're cool. And that's a good thing. Because I just recently learned that Earth, our planet, our home, well, Earth has a dad bod. Did you know that? Did you know Earth has a dad bod? Did you know that the Earth is wider at the equator than it is at the poles? Earth is not a sphere. It has a dad bod. It is squat and round in the center. It's a dad bod. I also recently learned that Earth, our home, is the densest planet in our solar system. I did not know this. And I don't know what this means scientifically, how being dense supports life or what it means biologically. I don't even know what it means geologically. I can't even fathom how anyone could even know that this is true, that Earth is the densest planet, but so be it. What I do know is that being dense is also really dad bod-esque. Earth has a dad bod. It's squat and round, and it's dense. So it adds to just how cool, because dad bods are cool, Earth must be. Now, I am under no illusion, zero illusion. There's things that I don't know, like how science and density uh, works, but I have clarity on this one thing. Faith. Life on the surface of this planet is a thing that I am aware of and observe. Faith, life on the surface of this planet, is hard. Living well here, living as a God-fearing, God-centered, caring of others individual, a person who is fulfilled and full of purpose on this planet is hard. To me, we get it wrong. On the one hand, we people of faith sometimes fall into a trap of walking around like faith sets our head in the clouds. Like if we do this thing just right, if we dress just right, or pray just right, or stand or sit during the appropriate spot, that somehow we've attained some sort of nirvana, mountaintop experience, nirvana enough at least. It's this sort of status or place or something. Our head is in the clouds like we've ascended. And this is a place where we get our lives and our living wrong. On the other hand, I know a lot of people. And I hear a lot of people say, nature is my church. I never feel quite as at home as when my feet are on the ground, as if if we just all set some things down and navel gazed while walking through the woods, we uh, all would have everything, every, everything around us all figured out. That we should simply put our toes in the earth and that that will be the miraculous thing that fixes everything. Like taking a walk alone or just with a couple of people we really like is a miracle and it's solved everything. Living on earth walking on the surface of this dad bod can frankly be kind of difficult. And we tend to fall into two camps where we get it wrong, the one where our heads are in the clouds or the other where it's about our feet in the valleys and our feet in the, in the dirt. And my hope is, is that God could help us on both counts because it's so easy to fall into either of these traps. Perhaps you've heard the story. Way back in the opening chapters of Genesis, there's an account of God walking in the garden in the cool of the evening. There's an image of the God who strolls. And the night is beautiful, and the imagery is fantastic. 
This imagery is relived and reframed by Jesus walking along the road to Emmaus. The classical pictures of this always make the day look so garden-esque and beautiful. It's a, a beautiful, perfect, pleasant day. The path is quaint. The trees are lush. And because of all the imagery, it would be easy to see this as an example of nature as our church and to not hear the message of who we are as earthbound creatures and what this is really saying, God help us here. Because there's complications with this story. You can see in the road to Emmaus or here in this story that there is very little actual discernment of who God is and of how God works and why walking together on earth is so important to what he is actually saying. It's troubling how little discernment or how little the humans in this story are capable of. A warning to those of us who think that we can take it onto either of our own hands, make it our own, and solve it. I mean, way back in the garden on those cool evening strolls where God walked, everything was fine until God started actually talking or asking some things, trying to relate, trying to communicate, and then the wheels fall off. Maybe part of our problem is that we've made it my walk instead of our walk. My planet instead of our planet. It was supposed to be for all of us. Our planet means all of ours. And it means living on the surface of this dad bod place together. As I say this, another allotment is going up uh, right beside mine. And I uh, say what I'm about to say with tongue in cheek because I'm saying this as a guy who lives in a still pretty new allotment himself. But I notice that we're more inclined than ever to think that a part of this planet is purchased and mined, it's owned and bought, and that our building on it is a right. Never mind that it causes... Uh, effects to the face of the planet. It causes runoff and it affects the stream that goes through that area. And the land topsoil is, is different now and the landscape is different. And all of this affects uh, more than just the people who have bought that individual property. Maybe we don't even think about this a lot. But living on this planet is hard. The planet has a dad bod and that's cool. But living here can be difficult. We err on the side sometimes of setting our head in the clouds like we know everything, or we err on the side of just trying to escape from all of it. But maybe there's a place in the middle. You ever wondered why this faith stuff is so hard? Why living uh, is so on this hand or that hand? Why it's so difficult? You ever wonder how God and God's walking is so lost on us? It's time for us to hear again that our feet weren't set on earth to mo make it our own, to make it mine. On the road to Emmaus, Jesus tells his disciples, look at my hands, look at my feet, look at my dad bod, or look at my side. And I'm wondering how often any of us could identify another person by their hands or their feet or their dad bod or gut. I once saw an episode of Dateline or 2020 or something where they put a kid in front of like a Walmart type store and they put behind him on a, on a stand right in people's way a poster uh, that had his picture on it and it had the word missing printed in giant red letters above it and they put the actual kid right next to it and people filed past this all day and not one person figured it out. We're so into my day or my thing that we don't always tread 
in a communal way on the face of this dad bod. Maybe this is why hands and feet and guts are the things that Christ draws our attention to. Hands, feet, bodies are important. And they are important because they are what connects us. These are the things with which we touch the earth and walk upon it. These are the things upon which we do work on our earth or occupy our space on earth. They are how we are who we are. And what if Jesus doesn't tell people to look at his face? Because what he's telling us to look at is much more organic and much more telling. Jesus' hands, Jesus' feet, and Jesus' side tell us all we need to know about him. We have pictures of Jesus spread out all over the place these days. We have all sorts of ideas of what he could look like and all sorts of arguments, and they're always about his face. But Jesus' own walk with us is a walk and asks us to look at his hands, his feet, and his side, the things that he uses to connect to this planet and to the people who live upon it. They're the things that tell us what he's been through. These are the things that show us Christ's actions. And they are actions that connect him to earth and to us, that bring him from heaven and set him into our midst. I once walked with a guy on the Appalachian Trail who told me to be very careful to watch where I was walking. Navel gaze, watch my feet. You don't want to trip with that pack on. Where you're connected to earth is important. But he also said, if you're really going to enjoy this, you have to look up once in a while, uh, or you're not really going to know where you were or how this went. And maybe our life is maybe closer to this, looking two ways at once. Jesus doesn't ask us to look at the clouds or his face, nor does he point to walking without relating to no connection to what is happening or what has happened, no uh, um, empty uh, absence of the tomb or a dark story. No, he asks us to look at both of these things. And what he's saying has to do something about taking it all in, the ups and the downs, looking to the feet, the hands, and the dad bod of God. This is more practical. It's more connective. It's more all around and balanced. But it's also hard. Earth Day is on April 22nd this year. It's upon us. It's this upcoming Thursday. And you'll undoubtedly be hearing all sorts of things about it. You'll be hearing about the peril that our Earth could be in. Maybe you want to hear more about that. Maybe you've heard enough. But I'm talking about all this. I'm talking like this. And this is what amounts to my Earth Day sermon. Because of the peril we who live on the surface of this dad bod are in. This may or may not coincide with the peril that Earth is in. Maybe you have a political opinion on that, and probably you do. The Earth, as dense or hard as it is, is where our lives happen. And I'm talking about the life that's on the surface of the dad bod. Did you know that Earth has a dad bod? Did you know that it's bigger at the equator than the poles? Did you know that it is the densest planet? Do you know what Earth's largest crop is? The most cultivated, grown thing on Earth. Do you know what it is? It's grass. My lawn and your lawn. Mine. Mine, mine. Lord God, help us on the walk to Emmaus. Help us to see your hands and your feet and your dad bod of earth. These things are holy because they connect us to where you have set us. There used to be a time when I set communion into your hands, the people of St. Stephen. 
And I'd like to think that I can identify most of them. But I do know that we've been connected. Because hands, feet, and sides are about connection. People of faith, you and I, are called to our own dense, hard life on the densest planet in the solar system. But we don't live this life alone. And in living this in community with God and with others, a God who strolls amongst us, the thing to look toward is pretty straightforward. Not the face, hands, feet, side. You and I have been formed in the image of God. We've been set on the dad bod surface of this planet. It is ours to care for. It is ours to live together on. And it is ours to watch beautiful things happen. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through word, through our community, through giving us a place to walk and to roam and to call our own, through the meal that you gather us before, you have set gladness in our hearts. We ask, gracious God, that you would satisfy our hungers, that you would help us be a part of satisfying the hunger that is in the world all around us, and that you would help us to be joyful witnesses so that your love may bring joy to the hearts of us and all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Stay safe. See you soon.